Welcome to Love for the Truth Radio, a program devoted to encouraging you to be a contender of the faith in an ever-changing church culture. On Love for the Truth Radio, we will discuss current issues and challenging views along with biblical truth that can affect our Christian worldview and how we live out our faith. And now, here's your host, Cindy Hartline. Welcome to the program. You know, many would agree that we are living in the last days and that the Lord's return is imminent. But how do we know for sure? Jesus told his disciples in the Olivet Discourse that specific events would be signs to look for, and that nations shall rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom, and there shall be famines and pestilence and earthquakes in diverse places. Well, we are witnessing many of those signs today. Our guest is William Koenig, White House correspondent for the Mideast. Bill is the author of the book, Eye to Eye, Facing the Consequences of Dividing Israel. Bill documented earthquakes, hurricanes, and such events that apparently occurred every time the U.S. held a meeting in reference to dividing the land of Israel. Obviously, God was not happy. We will be talking about some of those events today. We read in Genesis 12, I will bless those who bless you, and whoever curses you I will curse, and all peoples of the earth will be blessed through you, referring to God's promised land to Abraham on behalf of Israel. Needless to say, there's an evil resistance when it comes to Israel. We need to watch what's going on with Israel and to everything else that has to do with God's will and the surrounding resistance. Ephesians 6.12 states, For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against wickedness in high places. Indeed, there are evil forces behind the scenes influencing government officials and policymakers. It is obvious that the spirit of the Antichrist is on the rise, as spiritual warfare is seemingly at an all-time high. Right versus left, conservatism versus liberalism, religious freedom is increasingly under pressure, and so forth. You know, Bill also authored the book Revealed, Obama's Legacy, and says today very few people fully understand the extensive consequences of President Obama's two terms in office. Life as we know it in America will never be the same. I believe much of our resistance and protests are the result of Obama's legacy of change. Well, we'll be touching on that subject as well. William Koenig has been a White House correspondent for 17 years. He is the president of Koenig, World Watch Daily. Bill publishes weekly Koenig's Eye View from the White House. William and his wife, Claudia, reside in the Washington, D.C. area. Welcome, Bill Koenig. It's just a pleasure to have you on Love for the Truth Radio again. Thank you, Cindy. Always a pleasure to be with you. You know, Bill, we, we've had you as a guest on our show at least four times. I believe we've discussed your book, Eye to Eye, Facing the Consequences of Dividing Israel. We'll be covering some of that today and that uh, how all eyes should be on Israel right now, which is basically God's timeline. And also, uh, we covered your book, Revealed, Obama's Legacy, which I believe has much to do with all of the resistance to President Trump's uh, agenda. We'll be touching on that, too. But, uh, Bill, why don't we start with... With, um, you briefly sharing with our listening audience what your position as a White House correspondent is or entails. I think that would be helpful. Well, um, about 18 years ago, uh, when President Bush got elected, uh, I really felt I was in Dallas and I'd started an internet news service that focused on Israel and the Middle East. And I, I thought that I really felt like the Lord was uh, leading us to Washington, D.C. Uh, you know, I was from Dallas. Uh, he, you know, President uh, Bush had lived in Dallas, uh, he had, at that time, Governor Bush, and uh, it just, everything fell into place for me to start working out of the White House. Uh, it was supernatural. Uh, cl- closed doors in Dallas, open doors here in Washington, D.C., and uh, I've been serving there uh, as a watchman on the wall for 18 years. I've written mm-hmm. uh, three books. Uh, first one is with a Blessing and Curse. Uh, the second one, uh, Eye to Eye, Facing the Consequences of Dividing Israel. That was just updated for the second time mm. uh, last uh, last September, and then also uh, revealed Obama's legacy. So uh, you know, I see a lot of things there that a lot of people aren't aware of. So I, I put it into books. Uh, but most of our focus has really been on Israel, the Middle East, and uh, final day events, and uh, you know, being there at the seat of power uh, at the White House, uh, seeing so many amazing events take place, uh, leadership meetings. Uh, 
I remember back in 2001, uh, you know, President uh, Bush is the one that came up with the word uh, two states living side by side in peace and security. That was his plan before 9-11 stopped his, uh, his plan in its tracks until he finally acknowledged that in June of 2002. So that led into the that took the peace process to a whole different level. Mm. So I've, you know, I've warned the presidents, all of them, uh, since I've been there, president Bush, uh, president Obama, and also president Trump. Don't touch the land. Don't divide the land. Don't give up the land. Yeah. If you do, there'll be consequences. And here's my book that, uh, that proves this. Mm. And, uh, so I, I have a unique role because, uh, number one, uh, to explain to our presidents and our leadership in, in on Capitol Hill, that that land is, land that God gave to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob and their descendants, and no earthly leader has the right to divide that land, even despite being a great friend of Israel, especially Bush, George Mm -hmm. W., and uh, President Trump. That land is not to be an Arab state, Judea, Mm -hmm. Samaria, East Jerusalem. So so that's it, plus just reporting on final day events, and it's Mm -hmm. just uh, remarkable what's happening. And the United States doesn't have a significant role in final day events, no, let me put it this way: They're, they don't, they are not spoken of in the Bible. Right. Uh, when it really, in reality, we're not spoken of the Bible. But no nation has had more to do, especially our presidents, to do with final day events aligning than mm-hmm. our American presidents, and that's uh, that's so unique. We are a major catalyst to final day events. Yes, yes, we are. And you're in a very major and divine position, Bill. I don't think there's anyone in in the United States that has been placed in the position as you have. And I know it's God ordained. It's amazing. And it's such a privilege uh, to hear you uh, tell us about these events and what's going on. Now, we know, Bill, that we are all called to be watchmen. And I know that your position is very relevant to being that watchman, as you had said, uh, especially for Israel and how her affairs line up with Bible prophecy. And that's what we're going to talk about today. I know that you've watched the consequences that the United States had faced when pressuring Israel to divide her land, which is biblically against God's will, as you have said. And But what's really interesting is that you had documented these events in your book, Eye to Eye, Facing the Consequences of Dividing Israel. Uh, and I, I, what I want to do is just briefly share with our audience just a basic synopsis of your books, they can get an idea of what we're talking about here. When we apply pressure Mm -hmm. on Israel to divide their land, enormous catastrophic events happen in the United States many times the same day or within Mm -hmm. 24 hours. Mm -hmm. And uh, we've seen the perfect storm sending 30-foot waves into President George Herbert Walker Bush's home in 1991 (laughs) when he's in Madrid, Spain, beginning to land for peace process. I mean, at the moment, he's at a podium. No, oh, that's just uh, incredible. It's incredible. Hurricane mm. Andrew, uh, the next year when they moved the Madrid conference to the United States, Hurricane Andrew hit Florida at the very moment they began their meeting in Washington, D.C. And uh, I've documented 127 events, uh, the 9-11 terror events, what was taking place 17 days up until 9-11 with uh, uh, President George Herbert Walker. I mean, George W. Bush mm-hmm. uh, and uh, Crown Prince Abdullah from Saudi Arabia are going to develop that two-state plan, and that was stopped by 9/11. Um, Hurricane Katrina, that was right at uh, after 9,500 Jews were evicted from the home mm-hmm. and the land that the God of Israel put in their hearts to occupy. Within a couple hours, Hurricane Katrina developed just off the coast of Florida, and became at, at to this point the most significant event in the history of America. Yes. Uh, you know, the, the storms last year, um, Hurricane Harvey, Irma, and Maria, all happened during the mo- Jewish month of Elul. At the time, President Trump and his staff uh, and his son-in-law, Kushner, and, and Jason Greenblatt were meeting with Arab leaders mm. on President Trump's deal of the century, a Middle East peace plan that would have to have Israeli land to make that work. So, uh, and then just, uh, you know, just what we're talking about right now is as we are talking, yes. Hurricane Michael Yes. Uh, yes. had a connection 48 hours before Michael began. Uh, President Trump's uh, chief negotiator, Jason Greenblatt, was uh, uh, meeting with senators on Capitol Hill on the afternoon of October 4th, Thursday afternoon, and 48 hours later, uh, this new storm that developed into Hurricane Michael began. Mm. The first advisory was uh, 4 o'clock on Saturday afternoon, October 6th, which is also at the very moment 
the Senate started voting on Kavanaugh, yeah. on just Judge Kavanaugh to be the next Supreme Court at the very moment. That's an, that's so incredible. It, it is. That's and incredible. So mm. This is a this is the pattern. The greater the pressure in Israel, the greater the corresponding catastrophe. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and you know what's really interesting is is when you had just told me about this uh, Hurricane Michael now uh, with Kavanaugh. It's it's like we can see where God wants us to go just by watching these hurricanes, you know. But uh, what's interesting with Kavanaugh is that how do you see that connection? I know we didn't talk about that, but as this connection with Israel. Well, it's interesting because every once some of these events they'll happen. Mm-hmm. Just I mean, I'd say uh, since ninety nineteen ninety seventy five percent of the billion dollar hurricanes and billion dollar disasters in America happened at the time U.S., the White House, the U.S. administration was putting pressure on Israel to divide their land. They, they, the thing is, the key is pressure. Pressure, yeah. Pressure. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, and that's a key. I mean, there's conversation from time to time, but when there's an active involvement in the peace process, right. that's when these things, it's a period of disruption. I wrote about that in the beginning of, of Eye to Eye, is that there's a period of yes. disruption mm-hmm. as, they're working on, as they're working on these events it can be anywhere from a week to two weeks to, to five weeks to seven weeks. So it's disruptive. Uh, most events can connect to Israel. Um, there were a few, John McTurnan did a study on this years ago, that also uh, abortion, national abortion decisions are national gay rights events. Mm-hmm. They also had a component. So most of our record-setting events, that's the key. Record-setting, record-setting yeah. events. That's, that's the key. Most of them were Israel. But I, I, the Kavanaugh thing is interesting because... Uh, I believe uh, our Lord was not pleased with the way this man was treated. I agree with you. Yeah. With the lies and deceptions mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. even the disruption during the vote. But I don't think it was a coincidence. The fact as they began to vote, mm-hmm. uh, there was disruption in the Senate hall, which is very, very unusual. Yes. And plus the Democrat senators before and after that meeting continued to mm-hmm. come against uh, Judge Kavanaugh and P- President Trump's selection, uh, a godly man, a wonderful man, yes. uh, to be the Supreme Court justice. So didn't happen an hour before, four hours before, or a day or two later. It happened at the oh, moment my goodness. they're starting to yeah. vote. Isn't that something? Wow, isn't that something? And you know you know what, too, Bill, there's another part to this, is that our Constitution, I think it's amendment, I'm not sure if it's 14 or 15, that says that a man is innocent until proven guilty. And not that That's this right. was a trial. This was not a trial, but it certainly came off like a trial. You know, it was more than an interview, the way I see it, because this man was falsely accused as if he was guilty, which is, I know we didn't talk about this, but it's just setting in motion this whole woman's thing, this whole woman's Women's rights, and uh, you could see the damage that it has done not only to his family and and him, but just to our culture already. You know, it, it was hor- it was horrible the way it was. It handled. was horrible, and and when that 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 letter should have been uh, that letter should have been shared with the committee immediately. Yeah, they should have asked uh, during the opportunities that mm-hmm. Diane Feinstein and others had the opportunity to bring this up yeah. in private meetings in their office, or even bring it up during the the thirty two mm-hmm. hours of hearing. Mm-hmm. They should done it, but it was all calculated yeah. to create the greatest damage, to produce the greatest harm to uh, Judge Kavanaugh and his family, yes. and even to the Republican Party and even to the Republican administration. This was calculated, and I'm sorry, it was evil the way it was done, mm-hmm. uh, not telling that uh, uh, Ms. Ford that she could be uh, met with out in California, that mm-hmm. the Senate would send people out there to California and other things that were kept from her, and then her corroborating witnesses, none of them, remember, or even were part of that, and other things that did not connect in the story. So there is nothing, nothing compelling, you hear the word compelling, compelling, fine, maybe the presentation, but nothing was, nothing was was approved. Nothing, nothing that she said Uh, found out to be true. That's right. Well, we're going on a break, Bill, so let's hold that thought till the other side of the break. Uh, We'll be right back with Bill Koenig, White House correspondent. If you're a first-time listener, you'll find that on Love for the Truth Radio, we discuss news and views from a biblical worldview. We believe that the Bible is the inerrant Word of God 
and the absolute truth that should be applied to every aspect of life. We don't proclaim to have a cap on the truth, but we do have a love for biblical truth. So please, take everything you hear on this radio program to study and prayer. And thank you for listening to Love for the Truth Radio. Welcome back. I'm Cindy Hartline, your host for Love for the Truth Radio. And with us is guest Bill Koenig. Bill is, or William Koenig. He is the president of Koenig World Watch Daily. You can check it out at watch.org. That's W-A-T-C-H dot org, where he publishes Koenig's Eye View from the White House Weekly. Uh, Christians need to be watching. So you can get the latest news on Bill Koenig's site at watch.org and uh, be briefed as what's going on daily. And so much is going on daily. We can't even keep up with it. Uh, Bill, it is evident that we should be biblically concerned with how the U.S. deals with Israel, President Trump moving the embassy to Jerusalem and declaring it as the capital of Israel was a pivotal event in history. I know we didn't really, t- I didn't see hear much of this on the news. It's, it's, it wasn't really, t- as far as I know, it wasn't really talked about, but this was a pivotal event, I think, uh, especially for Christians. Uh, what's your thoughts on that? It's huge. Yeah. I mean, we had every, uh, almost every president back to Clinton, uh, you know, uh, President George W. Bush and Obama, all specifically stating that uh, during campaign season, they, they were, they were going to move the embassy to, to uh, Jerusalem from Tel Aviv. Yeah. Uh, what's, in, what's very, very interesting is mm-hmm. uh, there was a resolution put in place in 1995, and it had to do uh, every six months, the president would have to determine if this was the right time to move the embassy. Oh, so every six months through Clinton's, uh, from 95 through Clinton's term, through George W. Bush's two terms and Obama's two terms, they decided every six months that this was not the time to do it. That's interesting. The irony is the person that added the six-month clause was a guy named Dan Shapiro who worked with Diane Feinstein at that time, and they put the clause in in 95 at the last minute. Hmm. So here you have President Trump saying, I'm going to move it. Yeah. I'm going to move the embassy from Tel Aviv to Jerusalem. And, uh, and he did it. Yeah, he did it. <laughs> I mean, he said a lot of things during the campaign and he's doing he's it doing one it. by one. Yeah, he you is. know, some, some things can happen immediately and some take, some things take time, but that was a very, very courageous decision by uh, President Trump and very mm-hmm. thankful mm-hmm. Uh, of him doing that. And uh, many of us, that's the appropriate place for the for the embassy. Yeah, and, it doesn't make sense that it wasn't. And, and I, I guess my question is, is why was this a big deal that the, every six months they had to like kind of weigh this out? Is this the times? Is that, is that because of the whole peace thing going on between the Palestinians? And I, I mean, yeah, I assume was, it would be. Here's here's the here's the back uh, mm-hmm. the back room story in this. Um, a guy by the name of David Parsons, who's with the International Christian Embassy in Jerusalem, uh, is an attorney. And at that time, he worked with a guy named Dick Hellman. And Dick Hellman and um, David Parsons came up with this idea. They were really, really pushing to move the embassy. I mean, Dick's been working on this for 20 years. It's plus. amazing. Jeez. And, um, and, and Dick, and they basically wrote this plan up, and then they got the senators behind it. Mm-hmm. So all of a sudden, they're going, you know, APAC, the big... Jewish lobby says, wait a second, <laughs> we didn't come up with this idea. How are we going to let this little small little Christian lobby group that supports Israel to get this? We, we want to be in the limelight on this. And Shapiro, who ended up being uh, Obama's ambassador to Israel, yeah. working for Feinstein at that time, mm-hmm. threw that six, six-month clause in there. Yeah. Uh, also, not wanting, you know, think, you know, we might make peace. APAC was promoting peace, but, you know, we might make peace, but, you know, we don't want to disrupt the opportunity. So let's add the clause. So they added the clause. Okay. The six gotcha. month clause. So every president, Clinton, hmm. Bush, every six months, and Obama, every six months, said this is not the time to move the embassy to Jerusalem mm-hmm. because of the sake of the peace process. Yes. We don't want to ex- accelerate mm-hmm. terror. Uh, we don't want any problems. You know, and 90% of the people at the State Department told President Trump that would be a, a huge mistake. Don't do it. Senator, uh, former Secretary of State John Kerry told the world that this would be a disaster. We'll, we will have a uh, war break out throughout the Middle East. This is absolutely the worst decision that, yeah. that could ever be possible. Oh, it's unbelievable. All the Arab, <laughs> Arab countries, they, they went crazy. Uh, uh, Erdogan from uh, 
uh, Turkey brought in Arab leaders from all the world to condemn this decision. The UN condemned it. The EU condemned it. Didn't stop Trump. No, Trump it didn't stop it. him at all. Didn't stop him. <laughs> and the whole world coming against him on that. And this is the favor yeah. we see in President Trump. He, you know, he yes, has his he own does. unique way of yeah, doing things. Yeah, he does. I don't know but how he gets he, away with it, but he, but you know what? You see God's hand on it. It's all and, I and that's say. it. It's because the favor. You know, here's a guy that uh, beat 16 very successful qualified candidates during the presidential, yeah. uh, during the primaries. Uh, he became the president. And no one saw it. No one believed it, especially the other side. Yeah. And uh, so this is God's man for the hour. I mean, he, he is. is. He, and, and, you know, as, as we've talked about before, Cindy, when you favor Israel, when you favor the God of Israel, when God, the God of Israel allows you to be the leader at the time and you do good things, mm-hmm. positive things can happen. And also many of the things he's done for Christians here in America. I mean, what he's doing at the Supreme Court right now yeah. uh, with these two judges and also 26 new conservative constitutional yeah. following judges that have been put in the circuit courts. It's, yeah. it's phenomenal. So uh, he has his idiosyncrasies, but at the same time, this is the man God put in place at this moment and at this hour. Yeah, he's unmovable. I think that that helps a lot, you know, and he's not a, he's not yeah. a people, pl- well, he, he's not really a people pleaser. He knows what's right and he does it, but he does not move by anybody. No, you know? and, he no. Has God, and he has God's covering and security. He does. I, I think some I people do. are concerned about his security, but I, I believe that uh, there's a layer of security around him that no one can see, but yeah. but the God of Israel. So, yeah. Uh, yeah, it's unique, Cindy, but what a day to be be alive and <laughs> yeah, consequently, it, it, never a dull week. <laughs> there's never a dull week, and, and I think it's just so neat, you know, just I've never seen anything like it, the warfare, but I've never seen anything like it, what's happening with Israel or President Trump. We are living in very amazing God divine appointed or times, you know, here. Uh, it's just amazing. And, you know, I was thinking about it. Like, I, I believe uh, from what I heard is that uh, I, I think in the, the Jews made a, a coin, right, that has a, the side of Cyrus's face. That's King's exactly right. right. And I'm, also, yeah, yeah, and also President Trump. And, you know, when you look at that, you say, okay, well, we know that Cyrus started the whole thing, bringing the people back from captivity, you know, and then getting that whole role started as far as getting uh, them coming back, renewing their covenant and getting the, and then it went to, uh, let's see, Nehemiah did the wall, but it was Ezra that built the temple. So you just got to see that that whole God thing, you know, began to happen through Cyrus. So... I think that's well, amazing. Well, that, uh, that coin you're, you're yeah. alluding to is, uh, it, I've, I've used it in some presentations, uh, Cindy. It's, it's a picture of Trump and Cyrus on the same, same side, side of the coin. <laughs> that's what it is, same and side. it also has Balfour on there, King Cyrus, and, and then the Balfour Agreement, obviously, is the, the Lord Balfour back in the 1917 said that Israel has the right to you know, a lot, their own country and their own land. And, and then uh, what's also interesting is uh, President Trump is, is the 45th president. Yeah, and people yeah. look to Isaiah 44 and Isaiah 45 mm. that talks about King Cyrus right. and how God used this Persian king mm. uh, to defend Israel and uh, defend the, the right to Israel has to Jerusalem. So, yeah, the parallels are so intriguing. And uh, again, um, uh, this is this is who God allowed for to be the leader at this time to deal with the threats mm-hmm. that Israel and the United States is facing in the Middle East is very significant. Very significant. And that's why I want to move on to, because I had heard you say that Trump's son-in-law and it, uh, advisor Jared uh, Kushner, he plays a significant role in arra- arranging the peace treaty between Israel and the Palestinians. And I've heard you say that this treaty could very well usher in the new world order. And uh, I, I didn't... Uh, I didn't hear all the details of that, but why don't you share some of your thoughts on that, Bill? Well, what's interesting is, um, you know, President Trump and his son-in-law are deal makers. I mean, President Trump wrote the book, The Art of the Deal. Mm -hmm. Uh, Jared Kushner was very smart, uh, very smart, very capable. And his idea was, you know, as a Jewish uh, friend of Israel, his family had even put money into the settlement communities of, of Samaria and Judea, but mostly Samaria. Um, and um, I think that what's so unique is he had this idea that President Trump, <clears throat> I'm going to arrange an uh, opportunity for you to go to Riyadh 
and personally speak to the leaders of the 55 Muslim countries. Mm, yeah. uh, meet with the king of Saudi Arabia. Uh, Kushner developed a, a good relationship with the prince of Saudi Arabia, Prince Salman, uh, who has been favorable to Israel and the Jewish people. And so I'm going to set this up. So last May, uh, they had a meeting in Riyadh, uh, and President Trump was there. Uh, he was given the uh, a medal from the King Salman, mm. um, uh, King Abdulaziz Award that took Obama about four months to get it, President Bush, George W. Bush, about eight years to get it, but Trump got it immediately. Mm. And um, and then right after that, I was with uh, President Trump in uh, in Jerusalem. He came there. He flew straight from Riyadh. Rather than going to Israel first, then the Arab countries, they went to Riyadh first and then flew uh, straight from Riyadh to Jerusalem, which doesn't happen very often uh, by anybody. And, uh, you know, big meeting there. Uh, you know, President Trump gets along with Benjamin Netanyahu extremely well. So uh, the idea is to come up with this comprehensive, out-of-the-box, creative peace plan that would be with Israel and the Arab countries. Uh, Israel's developing a great relationship with the Sunni Arab countries right now because they're worried about this threat called Iran, uh, the Shiite country of Iran. So uh, there's the relationship has improved, intelligence has improved. Well, let's make a comprehensive Middle East peace plan. So Jared Kushner has been meeting behind the scenes with the leaders of Qatar, Saudi Arabia, United Arab Emirates, and then publicly with uh, the uh, president of Egypt, El Sisi, and then also King Abdullah of Jordan. So they've had, uh, you know, he's developed a great relationship. I've got to give the guy a lot of credit. It's a kind of out-of-the-box thinking. Let's Let's come together. Let's have a comprehensive peace plan. And for some of us, we're going, wow, could this be the Bible's final day peace deal in Daniel 927, which is a seven-year covenant? So uh, everything's moving along pretty well, but the Palestinians won't go along with it. You know, they, they never miss an opportunity to miss an opportunity. And yeah. so they, sure. they aren't happy with the plan. But uh, the Saudis are... are, are uh, are pushing the Palestinians. So we'll watch that very closely. Yeah, well, do we want it to, to go forward that quickly anyway right now? <laughs> you know, it's, it just seems like uh, if that's the beginning of, what is that, Daniel, not the seven-year, uh, you know, period. Seven-year hey, peace deal, yep. Peace deal. Anyway, we're going on a break. We'll be right back with Bill Koenig. We'll be talking about America's Great Divide. You don't want to miss it, so please stay tuned. You're listening to Love for the Truth Radio. We'll be right back, so please stay tuned. Many would agree that we are living in unprecedented times. Grave immorality is on the rise, as in the days of Noah and Sodom and Gomorrah. There are wars and rumors of wars as nations rise against nations. Prophecy is being fulfilled as the birth pangs become quicker and harder. These are the signs of the return of Jesus Christ. There is one sign often left untaught. Jesus also told the disciples in the Olivet Discourse to take heed that no man deceive you. This warning applies to us too. Deception has infiltrated the churches through many false teachings and movements, making apostasy paramount. As contenders of the faith, we do our best to research and discuss these false teachings for you, the listener. Thank you for having a love for the truth. Welcome back with us is guest Bill Koenig, and we've had an interesting conversation already with the events that's happening in the Mideast. Uh, you know, Bill, there you agree that there, and I think anybody would agree that America has a very great divide. We're seeing uh, so much happening. It seems like there's a spiritual warfare going on. Uh, Ephesians 6.12 states, For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of darkness of this world, against wickedness in high places. Indeed, there are evil forces behind the scenes influencing government officials and policy makers. And Bill, our government is obviously divided. You and I talked about that. We see the left versus the right as a spiritual war warfare. I see it that way. Why don't we talk about this? Because, um, you know, I, I think a lot of people are saying, gee, what is going on? And I believe that we need uh, the Holy Spirit to help us discern and to see through a lot of this. What are your thoughts on that? Well, this is a a classic battle. Uh, in, my, in my book, Revealed, Obama's mm -hmm. Legacy, I, uh, my opening scripture was Isaiah 520, and this really is a day mm -hmm. that good is considered evil, right. and evil is considered good. Mm -hmm. 
Mm-hmm. And uh, 85 to 90% of the uh, media in America are leftist, they're liberal. Uh, they promote uh, LGBT, same-sex marriage, abortion, mm-hmm. and other things that are just completely opposed to the scriptures that, that we follow our lives with. And this is a battle. Um, uh, the fact that, uh, you know, I think Rush Limbaugh said this well a couple months ago. He said that uh, the Democrats are fighting for the courts and the judges in the courts because they have used the courts um, and these activist judges to circumvent the laws of the land mm. and the legislation that's on the books. Yeah. And I know a few, few years ago, um, just, uh, Chief Justice Roberts says, you know, we're, we're basically, I'm paraphrasing, tired of being the one that arbitrates over legislation that has been approved here in Washington, D.C. So uh, I think that in the fact that Trump got elected, he's filling the courts, uh, two Supreme Court judges now, both conservatives, yeah. and filling the uh, circuit courts and lower courts with a lot of very qualified conservative Republicans has got the Democrats in a tizzy. Plus, uh, President Trump has got rid of a lot of regulations that were put in that were stifling American business. Uh, He's helped uh, level the playing field for corporate America, where Mm -hmm. the tax rate has been reduced. Uh, We do have a massive deficit that uh, it was $20 trillion when he took office. Yeah. It's a big problem. Uh, It doubled, uh, I think it was up 50% 50 during George W. Bush's time in office and doubled during during Obama's time in office. So I think with all this uh, lack of civility, the division over LGBT, uh, same-sex marriage, uh, you know, we, we're, in a, we're in a battle for morality of America. Yes. And, uh, you know, anybody that stands up uh, for what the Bible says is considered hate speech. That's hate speech when you speak against this. And that's just, you know, what they're trying to do is get rid of our right to free speech. Yes. And uh, they're exactly. calling it hate speech. Mm-hmm. So... Uh, it's a very, what we're facing here in America is that, and I have family, conservative members of my family that are Democrats and mm-hmm. um, that are very conservative. Uh, and, and in a lot of ways, my mother, before she passed, I mean, she was very involved in the, in the political party, mm-hmm. uh, in the Democrat party in Arizona, but she was, a, she, she was not a fan of, uh, of the platform of abortion and gay, gay right. rights and things like that. She is a conservative Democrat. Um, you know, and, and this is a battle. I mean, there's a lot of good Democrats, but how can you continue to stay in a party that has these kind of uh, values, yeah. or not values, uh, beliefs that are completely in opposite, opposition to the, the Word of God, yeah. our Judeo-Christian values? Mm-hmm. And this is a problem, Cindy. This is, what, this is a battle between good and evil. I, I, I don't think I can put it any other way. Right. Yeah, you're, you're exactly right. And, you know, I have a hard time with Christians that don't see it that way. And, you know, like you said, it, it's about, and, and, you know, this hate speech thing, let me just go back to that. It's like, it's like they can say anything and, and, and it's not considered hate speech. And that's what I don't understand. But yet we can't say anything uh, about it without us being ridiculed for it. It just seems like everything's one-sided. But to me, it has... They say we're, they say we're intolerant. But they're not tolerant of our beliefs. Yeah, this is what I'm saying. It's always one-sided. But you know what? What I see this as, Bill, is I see it as the nature of the Antichrist spirit or the nature of, oh, yes. of the no devil. Oh, yeah, no doubt. You know, it, Absolutely. Right? It's like, well, they, he, that's his nature. He's the father of that's lies. It. It's what it's his nature. He's a bullier. Accuser. He, accuser, abuser. He's an accuser. Yeah, everything. And so that's what we're seeing, folks, is we're seeing these the this the 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 um spirit of the Indian Christ on the rise that has the nature of the father of lies, accuser, abuser, and so forth, you know, against the very things of God, the Father Almighty, who is the Father of light. And uh, this is what we're seeing today. You know, I know, I, I believe that President Trump has done more for our nation than any president in history. You know, I know that. And um, he's done more. And again, because he's for Israel, that really helps. He has the favor of God like we, we talked about before. Unfortunately, we have this favor going on. We see that America's being blessed in so many ways, you know, economically and and uh, trying to push to, towards more of a conservative view in our moral morals, you know, 
But by the same token, we have this house that's divided, and the Bible says that a house divided against itself will not stand. And I think that's my main concern. I mean, will we go into civil unrest? You know, will we have a civil war uh, over these things? Because they're not going to stop, Bill. You know that. They have not stopped since Trump has gone into office, and I don't know if they're going to even stop when uh, for, for Kavanaugh at this point. I think they're just just like the enemy does. These, they're going to torture, and they're going to torture and just not stop. What are your thoughts on that? I agree. They're they're just wound they're wound up. And if you look, uh, you know, you, you listen to some of the commentators on CNN and MSNBC. I mean, it's, it's, where are you coming from? You're not connecting. Your dots are not. You're sitting here in line. This is deception. This isn't true. This is false. This is a false narrative. And you're out there trying to get people all frenzied and worked up and violent. And even a couple of Maxine Waters and Senator Booker, I mean, they're out here, and Nancy Pelosi are basically promoting some of this. This is ridiculous. You know, they tried, they tried to pattern themselves after the Tea Party, but the Tea Party had a lot of Christians. And they were very, very, you know, they were strong sometimes, but they weren't violent. What happens is this uh, group that was the Antifa, and, or Antifa, uh, Antifa, I guess, I, yeah, you put it them and others, uh, this is just violent. I mean, you can't, a conservative voice cannot be heard in a lot of college campuses today without violence. It's ridiculous. What about free speech? This is, they have weaponized uh, a lot of things right now. And it's, uh, and, you know, they say America is splitting apart. No, it's, it's the motivation and the actions of these radicals that are splitting America apart. And uh, they accuse us of what they are doing. Yeah, that's the, that's the. That's the that's enemy, the though. That's the of the accuser. <laughs> Absolutely. That's him. You want to know what they're doing? Watch what they're accusing. Same thing with Iran. You know, they're accusing others do, for what they're doing exactly themselves. It's amazing. Yeah, and then you got somebody like George Soros in the high places here with a lot of money, and he's the one that he's uh, funding these protests. See, I, oh, I don't understand how somebody like that can get away with it. I, I just don't. Like, we talk about hate speech, right? Okay, so what, how do they get away with uh, the hate speech that they're creating in their process, banging down doors, calling people names, you know, uh, interrupting uh, the Senate meetings? Like, I don't understand how that it's not called hate speech. Do you know? I don't, I don't know. <laughs> I know it. I know it. I, know it. I don't understand. It's, it's unbelievable. You just scratch your head. But, you know, I just, uh, it, you know, uh, fortunately, we have the Spirit of God, the Holy Spirit living in us because of our Savior, Jesus Christ. And we have a, a level of discernment and wisdom and, and uh, understanding uh, that we don't see it with those in opposition. And it's getting pretty crazy. That's true. And you know, here's the thing too, Bill, is that in the last days, many people will rise up and deceive many. And the Lord said, Be, take heed that no man deceive you, whether it's philosophies, concepts, traditions of men. You know, like Paul said, I didn't come to preach these things I came, or the rudiments of this world. I came to preach the power of the cross. And so there's a lot of people being deceived uh, by certain concepts and philosophies, whether it's liberalism, you know, socialism, uh, all the isms, people that are buying into that are really falling prey to a mindset that is different than what God wants us to have. And so they're falling into deception and then eventually delusion if they keep it up. But And the Lord said he'll send that strong delusion. I don't know exactly when that's going to happen or when it started, but, you know, that's what we're seeing right now. But I, I just really pray that our listeners get a hold of really what's going on. That's what I pray. Um, yeah, I think we're seeing the delusion. I think, uh, mm -hmm. you know, when you look at uh, uh, the Harry Potter books, oh, um, uh, yoga uh, other types of mind control issues mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. or, or things that people use. Uh, I think that spirit of delusion has been coming on for, you know, 15, 20 years, maybe longer, but, yeah. uh, uh, you know, it's, uh, it also, uh, humanistic, uh, yes. secular humanistic, uh, ways of looking things, uh, mm -hmm. no moral, mm -hmm. moral foundation. When you look at some of the college kids coming out oh, of my good, goodness. Uh, whether Ivy League schools or, or very large schools, I mean, 85, 90% are totally steeped in the liberal agenda and the liberal mm -hmm. beliefs and liberal values. That's right. And uh, it's, it's, it's very difficult uh, because it just don't make a whole bunch of sense. 
And for what we, you know, but if you, as you know, if you don't have that solid Judeo Christian right. foundation, That's right. then uh, things are getting crazy. And we'll, and it will, unfortunately, it, it turns to anarchy and lawlessness. Mm-hmm. And, um, and we're kind of at that edge right now. I'm, I, I don't know what's going to happen. Only God does. But uh, mm-hmm. I know whatever happens, mm-hmm. uh, eventually more and more people come to Christ as their Lord and Savior. So that's the, that's the silver lining in these days that we're living in. And yes. that's, that's what God is about. Yeah. So uh, yeah. it's hard to say, Cindy, yeah. but it's gonna. It's sure an interesting day to be living. Well, you know, we, we were talking about the house divide, but you know what's happening right now? I see a great divide with the Lord right now. He's drawing His people to come closer, you know, and those that are resisting Him or rejecting Him are actually going further away. And, you know, they're losing their identity. We talk about these kids going in college, you know, they're losing their identity uh, of who they are. We know who we are in Christ or how what God has created us to be. But with this whole gender thing going on, you know, these these young people have no uh, no compass at all as to where to go and how to achieve and what they are and who they are in God and how God inspires. And that's why we've seen a lot of these co- college campuses where they have these safe spaces and they get upset very easily. You know, they, they don't have their survival skills. They don't know what to do when they get out in the world. So this is, we're going to have these kids that are growing up now, it's going to be a very grim world if the Lord doesn't come back. <laughs> oh, no doubt about it. No doubt about it. <laughs> And only God knows how it's going to play out. Even the next few months, up to the election time, yeah, post election, and mm-hmm. and into uh, into 2019, uh, it's just every every day, every week, every month is different. So it's a very only different. He knows how it's going to play out. But we just need to keep pressing in as much as we can. That's right. Well, we're going on a break. Uh, we'll be right back with Bill Kanin. We'll be talking about what's going on in the Middle East. But please stay tuned. You're listening to Love for the Truth Radio. We'll be right back, so please stay tuned. In 2 Timothy chapter 3, we read that men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, without natural affection, truce breakers, false accusers, without self-control, fierce, despisers of those that are good, traitors, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God, having a form of godliness but denying the power thereof, from such turn away. They will be ever learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. Thank you for having a love for the truth. Welcome back. With us is Bill Koenig. Uh, he's the White House correspondent for the Mideast. And this is what we're going to be talking about now, Bill. I, I, I'd like to know uh, what's going on. I, uh, I know the last uh, highlight that I read on your iView uh, was that the U.S. Navy proposing major exercises aimed at China. So I don't know if you want to begin there, but there is so much going on. You just take it and go with it. Yeah, I think that, uh, you know, there's a couple international things. Obviously, mm-hmm. there's so much going on here yeah. domestically, but for us to watch Bible prophecy and things playing out is, uh, uh, I think, a couple things here. President Trump and his approach to North Korea yes, in that area of the world, um, you know, the Bible speaks of a 200 million man army. Well, there's only one nation that can develop a 200 million man army in the final days, and that's China. Mm. According to the CIA fact book, a few years ago, they could put 96 million people together, which is pretty ordinary. But uh, we're, we're going toe-to-toe toe toe, uh, with uh, China right now, happy with them. Uh, General Mattis has uh, pretty much told them, you know, he, we're going to go so far. You know, Mattis is a genius. Uh, we're fortunate to have him, uh, Secretary of Defense, uh, but he's also very prudent and, and a wise man. And then we also have uh, President Trump uh, standing up to, to, to rush uh, Turkey and Iran. I mean, these are three of the Ezekiel 38 and 39 countries mm. uh, that are very significant final day players. And the fact that President Trump has sanctioned or increased the sanctions on Russia, Turkey, and Iran is extraordinary. Wow. Because at that time, it's yeah. also bringing them closer together. Uh, I think the uh, the in May, when he said, I don't like this Iran nuke deal, 
they're they're bad actors. They're they're creating problems all throughout the Middle East. They're yes. taking this billions of dollars and throwing it at terror groups when they should be uh, enhancing the uh, the the economy of Iran. And That's they're right. not. They're bad actors, and they're being held accountable for that. And he got out of that deal. Uh, his sanction pressure is working. Uh, companies are bailing out of uh, European companies are bailing out of uh, Iran, despite the fact the EU is trying to preserve that deal. Yes, uh, it's it's working. Uh, they're they're going to put economic pressure on them. They're, the Iranian currency has collapsed uh, against the dollar. Uh, you know, it's it's too bad that the Iranian people are having to deal with this because eighty five percent of Iranian people are very pro West Westerners, hmm. are very pro America. Uh, but you had the 15% leadership there through uh, Khomeini yes. and the Ayatollahs and, and other people within Iran, the leadership and in the military that are just bad actors. And uh, uh, President Trump's dream team, as I like to call it, Vice President Pence, Mike Pompeo, Secretary yes. of State, uh, General Mattis uh, at uh, Defense, the Pentagon, and then Nikki Haley through the end of the year. Yes. Uh, they all fully understand the number one problem facing uh, the Middle East, possibly the world, is is Iran, and they're going to be dealt with. And yes. we have an administration that says uh, we're going to call it the way it is. So total okay. unique foreign policy, whether it has to do with North Korea, China, uh, even NATO, President uh, Trump putting pressure on NATO for those countries to fulfill their obligation to NATO. And he said that the United States is tired of of carrying the major part of the weight of NATO. So right. a lot's happening that's biblically, prophetically relevant. And mm -hmm. then we have our, our tiny little country uh, of Israel that's uh, doing everything they can to prepare for war if they have to go, go to war within 24 hours. They, they know they, this is a very serious time for them. Right. See, and, and that's what we need to, to keep our eyes on right there. And here, this little, like you said, this little country, it's about as big as New Jersey and the United States and all of these nations against Israel. Uh, you know, you had mentioned Ezekiel 38 and 39, that it has a lot to do with uh, Russia, Turkey, and Iran kind of coming together. Can you explain a little bit more on that for our audience? Well, this is the Gog-Magog war. This is mm -hmm. probably the biggest war uh a final day war that we'll see up until the Battle of Armageddon, when that's the nations of the world come against Jerusalem, and they will be defeated by, by the God of Israel when Jesus Christ returns. But uh, prior to that, uh, you know, the p prophecy scholars will say some people believe it will be before the final seven-year deal. Right. Some people believe it will be right inside the seven years, in, in the early part of the seven-year uh, peace deal with mm -hmm. Israel and its neighbors. And some people be believe it will be close to the time of Armageddon. But what happens if you look at that scripture, a hook is put in right. uh, to Gog, and they're pulled in. They're, uh, literally, God is leading these nations to come against it. Uh, he's going to motivate them to come against this tiny little country, and he's going to devastate them. He is going to come against them so hard mm. that people mm -hmm. will know that there is a God of Israel protecting this tiny little country. Wow, yeah of seven or eight million people then. Mm -hmm. And so when we see the alignment, especially of the big three, Russia, yeah, Turkey, and Iran, Iran yeah. coming together, speaking against Israel, uh, especially Turkey and Iran, and then, um, and then uh, Russia's role in Syria, and the fact that Iran is there, um, you know, continually talking about getting rid of the, the great Satan, which is the United States, and little Satan, a lot of people are watching this yeah. with great interest, and uh, that's why this whole pressure uh, by the Trump administration on Iran uh, is going to it's going to be very interesting. And Iranians are very smart; they're very shrewd. Former CIA person told me a few years ago she's 28 years CIA said it's not by chance that the Chinese, the Persians, and the Jews have survived centuries because they're that smart. They're 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 survivors. Hmm. So Iran are three-dimensional chess players, according yeah. to some of my Arab friends, yeah. and uh, they're very smart, very shrewd. So this is a very formidable battle between uh, Israel, yes. who has a God of Israel on their side, and Iran. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, we'll get to see some miracles taking place. It might be like a Gideon's army at this point. That'd be very interesting to witness. <laughs> yes, yes, <laughs> this point. absolutely. It's yeah. going to be very interesting. Very interesting. And uh, why don't we move on to what's going on with uh, Russia? Well, we talked about something like that, but the Russia, Israel, and Syria thing going on right now. 
Well, I think the the big thing there is uh, mm-hmm. is the relationship. I mean, President Trump uh, with NATO is he's trying to strengthen NATO. Uh, you know, to be part of NATO, it's twenty eight countries. Only four percent, four of the twenty eight countries had fulfilled the obligation oh, that two percent of their gross domestic product, their their economy, mm-hmm. had to be given for defense. Right, and only. Four or five countries out of 28 had fulfilled their obligations. A couple of small uh, Eastern European countries and the UK and the United States. Mm-hmm. And other countries, uh, Germany, France, and others had not fulfilled this obligation. And the United States, and President Trump, I think, has got a commitment over $40 billion from these countries to build up their defenses because they've got a problem called Russia and they better get strong because Russia has plans. And um, mm. and also the the sanctions that have been uh, United States sanctions against members of uh, Putin's close close friends, uh, and also people in the military establishment are are pretty serious. So uh, Russia, you know, they're they're very savvy too. They're very smart. They're mm. they're tough. Uh, they don't have anywhere near the military that we do, but they have a lot of nuclear weapons. Yeah, and that's why they're at the same table with the United States lots of times because. You know, we could do a lot of damage to both countries. Mm-hmm. Uh, right now, we're concerned about some of the Russian activities, uh, bring, bringing some bombers close to Alaska. Mm-hmm. Uh, some mm-hmm. of the, the bomber activity there in the Middle East um, with uh, the British planes, and I think also the, some Norwegian planes recently. Mm-hmm. And the other thing is the amount of ships that they're bringing down to the, the, the port, their port in Tartus, Syria. Uh, they've mm-hmm. established a port, and they've had a lot of their big ships down there re- recently. So they're 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 doing a lot of things. They're posturing. They're um, they're also developing a submarine fleet that uh, some of our generals are very concerned about, hmm. especially on our east coast. So really? you know, I didn't know about that either. <laughs> oh yeah, this is this is in the news just a couple weeks ago. So if you would uh, put in uh, put that in Google, you'll you'll be able to pull up the story. So uh, yeah, we're very concerned about Russian subs. Um, and then, you know, we had a, a, you know, back to China, we uh, had a Chinese ship within 50, 50 yards of one of our big uh, ships a couple, you know, a week and a half ago. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, you know, this is just a, a, we have disruption here in America, and we have uh, uh, international disruption when it comes to these major final day countries. So, again, Cindy, this is, this is all yeah. falling right into place. It's this is what the place. Bible said would be like in the mm-hmm. final days. Yeah, yeah, and we're talking about this spiritual warfare. I've always said that what we see in the natural is actually happening in the spirit. Well, the same thing, like you said, the dis- with the disruptions going on right here in the United States, the same things going on in the world at this time. But I just thought that uh, President Trump was having a, a better relationship with Putin, uh, and yet we're seeing here that he's pulling some things like having his— uh, uh, his ships where they shouldn't be in a submarine fleet here on the East Coast. What's going? What do you What do you think he's uh, up to? <laughs> well, I think it's uh, you know a couple alpha guys. You know, both uh, Putin. You know, he wants to be this tough, strong leader. He's a former KGB spy master. He's a very smart, mm. clever, crafty guy, and uh, he's a judo black belt. So he knows leverage. And, uh, you know, Trump being a, a strong leader as well with a very formidable uh, military that's going to have $770 billion more of money to spend, uh, uh, the military is going to be strong. I mean, it was decimated during Obama's eight years in office. Yeah. The morale was horrible. And, uh, you know, General Mattis is, uh, is, is so well thought of and so well liked. And he is the soldier's general. They, they love the guy, and he's so mm-hmm. capable. And, I mean, he almost – I think he only had one senator that voted against him uh, out of 100. I mean, he wow. is so yeah. capable. We're blessed to have him. He's, he yeah. sees things for what they are. And he also has a bone to pick with Iran because uh, Marines – he was a Marine uh, – lost, uh, lost their life in Lebanon back in the late 80s, and he, uh, 33 years ago. Oh, and he wow. does not forget that. Yeah. So, um, uh, so anyhow, with all that said, we've got the, the right people in the right place at the right time. Mike Pompeo is very gifted, mm-hmm. uh, West Point grad, top of his class, Harvard mm-hmm. Law degree, mm-hmm. but very articulate. Yeah. And that's what we need at State. He gets along great with General Mattis. So Trump has, despite his, his ways of <laughs> communicating, yeah, really, he's just... got a very formidable uh, uh, dip- diplomatic and also uh, defense team in place. 
and he loves the generals, and he's going to give them what they need. So, mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. and I, we're very blessed uh, here in America to have that kind of leadership in place. Very, very blessed. I feel a lot more safe than I did under the Obama administration. I'll tell you that right now. Uh, yeah, yeah, and and then and then to see his meetings with the, uh, you know, the police chiefs, uh, you know, that were down there in Florida. He had a meeting with them and thanking them, uh, you know, for all of the service that they have done. And, you know, he's just been the veterans and taking care of the veterans. It just seems like this needed to happen for some healing. Uh, Absolutely. Because we've been through so much with the, with the, not that the Black Lives Matter was bad, but it, I, I just remember our uh, policemen going out without guns and they weren't able to do their job and their hands were tied behind their back. And, you know, quite honestly, I thought we, this is, this is not good. We are not being protected in any way at this time. So exactly. Yeah, and and I know we did a whole show on that whole thing. And, and by the way, uh, Bill, why don't you just uh, just briefly for our listeners? Uh, okay, we have a break coming up. All right, but I do. Um, if you can just briefly explain your book about Obama's legacy and where they can get that. Yeah, Obama's legacy. It's called Revealed Obama's Legacy. Mm-hmm. They can get it uh, through our website, which mm-hmm. is Watch dot org. Uh, and it's also available on Amazon. Mm-hmm. And it goes into detail about uh, Obama's eight years in office, uh, as well as uh, eye to eye, facing the consequences of dividing Israel, uh, available both places. And also, I put out a weekly news report called Koenig's Eye View from the White House. That's a 15 to 18 page weekly summary of world events that happened that week that, that were prophetically relevant. So, um, and then we post news at our website, which is watch.org, that's W-A-T-C-H dot org, uh, every day of the year. Uh, and it's uh, an amazing day, as we've discussed, Cindy, yeah. uh, to follow these world events that are so biblically insignificant and significant, prophetically significant. Uh, we're going on a break, so we'll be right back, and Bill will share with us his final advice, so please stay tuned. Welcome back. I'm Cindy Hartline, your host for Love for the Truth Radio Philadelphia. Look us up on lovefortheTruthRadio.com. We air programs via stream every day. You can find program archives uh, with contributors John Haller, Chris Quintana, Carl Tycrib, Patrick Wood, guests like Bill Koenig, Ray Youngin, Johanna Michelson, Bill Salas, and Jan Markell, and many more veterans of the faith with the voice of truth. You can find us on Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, SoundCloud, and on Rapture Ready Radio on Monday evenings on Blog Talk Radio. Radio with Jackie Alnor, along with numerous web radio programs who air us on their stations worldwide. Well, welcome back, Cindy Hartline, again from Love for the Truth Radio. With us has been Bill Koenig. Uh, Bill has offered us so much information about what's going on in the Middle East, the events that are lining up in, the, in these last days, and how we need to be watchmen, you know, as Christians, to watch what's going on, and the Holy Spirit will lead and guide us and give us discernment as to how, uh, you know, what's going on around us and how we can gauge our lives to walk that, that straight and narrow and to be a light and salt to this earth. So, uh, Bill, uh, we'd like to hear your final advice. You know, what what should Christians do right now, these listeners? Well, we need to keep things uh, in in proper perspective. Mm -hmm. Uh, These are, we're living in the final days. Uh, All the signs are about us. We're watching the major prophetic nations that I mentioned earlier in the program, Mm -hmm. Russia, Turkey, Iran, uh, the United States, uh, having a very significant final day prophetic role, China, uh, Saudi Arabia, Syria, and most important, Israel. It's just an amazing day we're living in, and yes. all the things are aligning mm-hmm. toward that final peace deal in Daniel 9.27. Mm-hmm. And uh, God's about souls. I mean, He is about souls, leading people, seeing people come to Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. So I continue to encourage people, let's don't forget that we are living in the final days, yes. that God has everything under control, that they're not falling apart, they're falling in Amen. place and that Jesus Christ is coming back to begin his thousand-year millennial reign soon. Yes. So let's, uh, mm-hmm. let's keep praying for those lost in our families. Uh, let's keep praying for those that we come across uh, that need to hear about Jesus, and let's mm-hmm. share the gospel, mm-hmm. because uh, mm-hmm. God gave us the handbook uh, of, his, of how we should live our lives, and he also gave the prophetic part of his handbook, the Bible, yes. to show us uh, what is important, uh, what, what can we follow and to let us know that we need to stay occupied till he's come and continue to share the gospel of Jesus Christ with whoever he puts in front of us uh, each day and, and continue to pray for the peace of Jerusalem 
which will only happen when Jesus Christ returns to Jerusalem to begin his thousand-year millennial reign. Amen. Well, thank you so much, Bill. And again, check out Bill's website, watch.org. That's W-A-T-C-H, watch.org. Thank you, listeners. Have a blessed week. We'll see you next week. <laughs>